And now we make it to the abdominal area. Um, we look back up here at the heart. Moving camera. We look at the aorta as it's leaving the left ventricle. The ascending aorta is the part that's going to be going up. All right, and then it takes the arch. We call that the arch. The aortic arch. We're clever. Mm -hmm. And then we go down. So we have to turn, and that's going to go behind the heart. This is the descending thoracic aorta. So it literally cuts behind the heart on this model. And as we pass the diaphragm, which is where we're focusing now, we are going to pass into our descending abdominal aorta. And there are a few branches off of this aorta that we need to look at. And I'm going to zoom in. Ready for this? All right, so as we look right here on the abdominal aorta, you can see there are two red branches that are kind of clicking off here. The very first one is going to be a little system that pops off of the celiac artery. So the celiac trunk has three major branches you need to know. The first one is called the hepatic. This is the one that goes to the liver, which you can see right the second one is going to go up to the stomach, so it's called the gastric. And then the third is called the splenic, which will go over to the spleen. So if we look at the second little bump off of the aorta, that little trunk right there, down a little farther, that one. Oops, sorry. That's okay. That is the superior mesenteric artery that's going to be feeding our intestines with blood. Right, and as we follow it down the aorta, we have two more branches that come off of the kid or go to the kidneys: the left renal artery and the right renal artery. And as we move down just a little bit farther. The little branch right here is going to be our inferior mesenteric artery. That will be feeding our lower or large intestines. Now we see that the aorta splits. Why the heck do we need to split the aorta? Because we have legs. What? Yeah, Two legs that we need to feed, right? So the arteries here are going to split off to go down basically through the hips and to the legs. The first little section there is our common iliac artery. So note there is a common iliac artery on the human. There will not be on your cat. The cat does not have a common iliac artery. But we will see the internal iliac artery that goes down into, so the right and the left there. And then the external iliac artery, which is going to continue down towards the hip on both the right and the left side. So as we go down the leg, we are going to hit a point about right there <gasps> where we um, act. Don't, it is no longer external iliac. This becomes our femoral artery. Gosh, I love how these are named after the bones. Right? We learned all these for a reason. Oh my didn't goodness. We? All right, so as we follow the whole femur down towards the knee, we're going to end up in the popliteal region. Oh, one of those anatomical names. Do again. you think that this might be called the popliteal artery? I'm thinking. All right, it is. You're correct. Yay! Yay! And the blood is, of course, going to continue down to the toes, but we're not going to worry about the names of those. And Blood at the toes, blood, blood at the, the toes, toes. And it's going to have to come back. Coming back. So we got to look at the right leg on this model from that. And as we look at this really long blue artery that runs, I'm sorry, it's a vein. Yep. It moves all the way back up to the hip. This is called the great saphenous vein. It is the longest vein in your body that's going to be draining blood from the toes. Now, as it comes up, it's going to run alongside our femoral vein. So again, there's a popliteal and a femoral vein uh, as well as artery. And as it comes back up towards the hip is again, we're going to meet the external iliac vein and we're gonna converge with the internal iliac vein. Both of those will come together forming the common iliac vein. There is a common iliac vein on the cat. There is not a common iliac artery on the cat. Cats are weird. <laughs> so as both of the common <laughs> iliac veins meet together, they're going to be forming our inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava is going to be collecting blood from all over the place, um, including the lumbar region, which we can't see on this model. Somewhere in we here. We should be able to find it on the cat. And then we're going to be grabbing from both the right and the left renal veins coming out of the kidney. And then we got this purple thing going on. 
Purple. This purple-ish thing on here is what we call the hepatic portal system. Fancy, fancy. I know. It's going to be grabbing and distributing blood up to the liver from all of our intestines because when we get all that crap out of our food, then we've got to filter it and yep, send it into the right places. Filtering and, and cleaning gut stuff. It's complicated. Going through the liver. Right. And so the inferior vena cava is going to continue up grabbing all of that dirty blood and taking it back to the right atrium. And that's the entire circle. Yeah, it's a good circle. 